much shorter, I think. Um, I didn't know there were that many people coming. I think last time I was at the Papers We Love, it was like three people or something. <laughs> And uh, yeah, here because of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All because of me. My, my name, my name draws the people. Yeah. Um, no, um, yeah. So I didn't prepare any slides anyway. Uh, and and again, this is going to be very brief. And I think uh, there are probably a couple of people here who know more about CPU architecture than I do. Um, probably most people here know more. Um, and I guess some people have read the paper. Who's who's read this or the Spectre paper or the Google uh, blog thing? Okay, so some have looked at it. Um, so yeah, let's let's turn this one into a roundtable discussion. So I don't look uh, I don't look too dumb when we uh, when we talk about this. So so just you know <coughs> chime in when you have something to say. Anyway, um, meltdown, right? It's a uh, CPU bug. Uh, well, uh, no, that's the thing. Like if you ask Intel, it's not a CPU bug. They work as designed. It's like Maybe as a, an undesired, yeah, it's a feature, an undesired side effect, um, and and I think it's true because it's so, uh, it, it's well, it's a side channel attack, and there are lots of side channel attacks that are kind of weird and uh, strange to think about. And this one is, is yeah, I think it's quite a mind fuck. It's quite interesting that this is uh, uh, possible, um, right? So, um, how does it work in general? So generally, sidechain uh, attacks are basically exploiting um, side effects of, of um, let's say, in this case, of, of uh, the inner workings of a CPU. So you have um, uh, the desired normal effects. You, you feed the CPU instructions. It executes the instructions. You get back results. But there are always, um, or there, there can be side effects. And by sort of exploiting these side effects, you can extract information that's general uh, gist of it. Now, um, Meltdown specifically is about out of, ox uh, out of order execution, um, which, which is how CPUs, um, uh, modern CPUs, um, currently work, um, or, or like break down instructions into smaller uh, micro instructions. So you have like the CPU instructions that you all know if you know. Um, uh, if you ever looked at assembly code or um, ever debugged anything on low level, so you have CPU instructions. They get they get broken down into into uh, smaller instructions, and they can get executed out of order because um, uh, some parts of the CPU might not always be uh, 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 might be um, utilized on different levels. So you you kind of want to parallelize as many things as possible so you, you don't necessarily want to keep the order of um, of the instructions so you kind of look ahead a little bit and you, and you see what you can what you can execute uh, in advance particularly memory fetches which are really really um, um, take a long time in CPU terms I think hundreds of instructions does anyone know yeah, so hundreds to thousands, I think, right? And then you have uh, about three layers of cache nowadays, which I think reduce it to tens until, I think, single on digits? Average. On an average. Yeah, but, but level one can be almost single digit instructions, I think, right? Yeah, something like that. Orders of magnitude different. Um, so some of these, some of these, uh, so Basically, the memory fetches in particular, they execute um, um, speculatively as well. Like they execute, uh, they may execute, well, no, it's not speculative execution. That's what Spectre is about. So it's um, slightly different. But if you have, uh, say, instructions that check for access and following that, you have instructions that in, in the case that um, access um, um, actually well, that is speculative execution. Uh, anyway, um, these instructions follow the, the, the instructions checking for access um, or any sort of like CPU features which could, uh, CPU security features, we could trigger a, um, a CPU level exception. The memory fetch instruction could still be executed um, before, before it's actually checked whether it should be executed because of this out of order um, execution. Um, now, in Meltdown specifically, the way the the, um, the exploit works is by um, 
this is cool, this snippet. Um, so essentially, I'll, let's go. I'm not sure if they have a schema explaining the whole idea. Um, so in the export, you have, you have uh, two components. One is the component that um, extracts the information. In this case, the entire kernel memory that you can read out. Um, uh, the entire, actually the entire system memory that you can read out because it's, it's uh, mapped into um, basically the entire ad address space is in, in, in operating systems nowadays is mapped. It's just you have like access controls via um, a specific bit. So only the kernel technically can access all the memory, but um, uh, again, like that is sort of checked at a, a slightly um, inopportune time. Now, um, you have the information extraction part essentially, which tries to execute um, the instruction that fetches um, um, memory, that tries to execute, uh, that, that tries to access a specific memory address. And afterwards, um, based on that, and again, this is, this, these are all just instructions that, that don't officially get executed, but get executed sort of out of order. Um, you fetch a specific memory address, and then you use this memory address to um, fetch a um, memory, uh, like you use the, the, act that you use the content of that memory as the address of another fetch you do on, on your own memory. And again, this all gets executed and then the, the, um, the CPU realizes that it wasn't supposed to actually give you that memory, so it kills your process. But at that time, you already, the, the, the second fetch is already executed and um, the, the content from 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 your memory, um, the, the 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 byte that you wanted to fetch with this address, uh, sorry, the block that you wanted to fetch with this address, uh, in this this byte that you originally got from the memory you were not supposed to access, um, uh, that part will be in memory. So uh, in 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 the cache. So now in the second in the second process, it can run technically also in a different like virtual machine and everything, completely independent of the first process. Um, I think. You access the the same memory um, and check the timing. Although now I'm a bit confused. Is that the three locations and you see, see which one's the one that comes out the fastest? Yeah, exactly. That's the one that was that was uh, cached. Exactly. So that address then the address of that memory is the actual byte you wanted to uh, like you you were not supposed to read. So with that, it's possible to read out the entire system memory of a. Um, uh, of a system, and I think the speed, I think they mentioned the speed of how quickly they can do it, and it's some, somewhere around 500 kilobytes a second or something, which is, um, uh, yeah, 502, 502 kilobytes a second, um, which is kind of a lot if you want to read out a couple gigs. I mean, it takes you a couple minutes, two hours. Uh, all right. I guess it's this slow because you have to keep redoing this because as you yeah. probe the addresses for how fast they are, you keep flushing your cache, so you have to then yeah. redo yeah. all the song and then so that. Yeah, it's a lot of loops. So, so it's it's in in CPU terms, yeah, 502 kilobytes a second is is very slow because there is yeah, there's a, a lot of a lot of stuff involved. And uh, this is also so so the original uh, thing. I think the first approach was uh, you have this process trying to fetch this this memory uh, from uh, from the kernel address space somewhere, and uh, that usually kills the process. You get a segmentation fault. Your process dies. So they have some some strategies against that. One is uh, um, the, well, did it die? Yeah, it's a meltdown attack. There's a real time real meltdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my machine got yeah, I think my machine got meltdown. Oh, <laughs> oh. Huh? What? Yeah, sure. This is working. But it doesn't really matter. I was just scrolling up and down and through the paper. Um, It's fine. That was okay. That was actually something cool. I read the whole um, the uh, the exception suppression. There's this feature. I think the Intel TSX is explained 
a bit further up. This is yeah, here. This is cool. Um, so Intel has this sort of like transaction feature for for memory operations. So you can basically say um, you you can you can group multiple instructions, and uh, and then if if one of them fails, which it will if you like one will fail if you try to access a memory you're not supposed to access. Um, your process still stays alive. It's just all the other instructions in that group are not officially executed. So you can you can kind of you can avoid your process dying. So you don't have to fork all the time, and that speeds it up a little. Um, and then there's this. Um, um, they mention um, the um, uh, the kernel address, address space layout uh, randomization. Uh, stuff that's been going on in the kernel that is now uh, default, which I think mostly helps. Although it's still, it's it's not, it doesn't necessarily make it completely impossible, just sort of not very feasible. I guess you would still so. need to, I mean, before this you, you, you knew where it was, so you could hard get it very quickly, whereas now you kind of have to yeah. go read the whole memory and then... Fish like in the dark a little, it, yeah. yeah. You read out the table itself, right? Isn't isn't the, the memory mapping table? Um, it's it's not technically right. in the memory, isn't that it somewhere in the MMM? The, the, the KSLR, ASLR table, then you should be able. To, maybe that's exactly why it takes a bit longer. Is because you have to go first go get a table, mm. and table then go get the basis. Test the levels. Yeah. So yeah, anything anybody wants to contribute? Any and like. Those who read the paper, what was the, the most interesting thing? No, but anything, anything I omitted uh, in particular? It was super cool to see the, the chaining of attacks, it almost feels like, because it's like the, mm. the fact that it, the, the meltdown itself is basically that it, it doesn't undo its edits. Right, so it's mm. supposed, it says that this instruction you, you, it, it, it goes ahead it goes ahead and, and, and does stuff out of order, but then something breaks it doesn't fix you know, clean up all the crap it did right it doesn't go to clear the caches and stuff. It clears the registers but not the cache yeah the, I, I think the problem is that if you if you I mean this would also happen in the case of uh, branch misprediction which is which is the case for spectral right but if you want to flush the cache every time that happens, that will probably make it much slower as well. No, but that, that's, that's a software fix to it, which is you flush the whole cache. Well, if yeah. it was probably designed in hardware, it would so just this, flush this that entry, right? Because it knew where it, what was the stuff it just did, which it had yeah. to roll back. Yeah. Uh, so but wouldn't you need like twice the cache? <coughs> because sure, yeah, how, how yeah. do you know what yeah, you yeah, write yeah. back? So that, that would be from a hardware perspective a much harder problem to solve, but that should be the right way to solve it rather than the software fixes we are putting in right now, which is, well, yep. every time you do a, 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 a exception, just flush the whole cache. So every yeah. time you change from user, user mode to kernel mode, flush the whole cache. But then if you flush a specific cache entry, won't that also open a side channel where you can say if you... <coughs> where you can figure out whether a, p a particular cache entry disappeared. Yeah, but that's something, if you yeah. have priced the cache, yeah. you can, so basically you can have like a temporary cache that you only commit yeah. into your real cache when an operation ah. finishes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so if it's already cached, then you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't flush it in, in the actual, like yeah, a, something like that. A free cache that, that yeah. runs through on on the on the, e the end of an atomic whatever instruction yeah. barrier yeah. that you have, that is yeah. okay. At the end of this, push everything through the real cache, right? For reading. Yeah. So the, again, these are again things that they will probably end up doing in the long run. But yeah, it's, it's super cool. And then they 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 found that with the whole cache sniffing and you know, a side channel attack by just doing the timing. Even the the, the yeah. I mean, so this stuff is old, but the way they figure out what's not in cache and what's in cache. Mm. It's super cool. I mean, these, these side channel attacks are... I, I felt the uh, Spectre was a bit more of a mindfuck in, in the sense that they do like super crazy stuff in there, like identifying bits in the code. You're, like Spectre is a bit, a bit different because I think you have to sort of still find sort of vulnerabilities in the, in the target. <coughs> um, these, these weird, I forgot what they are called, where you basically can jump around. That is, that is even more complex. 
This one is almost straightforward uh, compared to it. Uh, so? No, it's it's more like uh, I think you you need to find some specific constellations of uh, I forgot what it was. Do you have the uh, melt the, the, the spectral well, paper we'll here? But yeah, we cover spectral next month. Okay. I'll come back for it next month. I will. So, yeah. so if we were to, to play doubles, at that, so how would we absorb intel of this? So what, what I'm hearing <laughs> does the IFA say anything about? The cache. It probably doesn't, right? Because the cache is fully transparent. But, but then so the ISC doesn't say anything about uh, about uh, brand, uh, uh, out of order execution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if, if you s just stick to the ISA, yeah. you can't observe the yeah. impact. Yeah. And the timing is not specified in the ISA, no. so you can't make any yes. inferences based yeah. Yeah. on memory yeah. read speed. Yes. So if you're only programming against the spec, yeah. Yeah. you can't. Well, yeah, that is that is that is kind of the the abstraction of the ISA, which is the architectural um, um, level, and then everything that happens below is is internals, Intel internals, the micro architectural level. Right, but I mean, that is not really the access time of memory. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's technically not defined uh, into yeah. that kind of. They probably have some. Yeah. Uh, right. Definition saying that right. it's going to yeah. be faster, or it's going to be slower, or whatever. But at that kind of granularity, not at the kind of <laughs> nanosecond granularity yeah. that people actually use to compare. It's like, ah, this one was faster. Okay. Yeah. I thought um, the um, uh, one of the one of the mitigations. Well, I'm not sure if that was meltdown or spectre. Is that browser may cause uh, decrease to the resolution of their timers, yeah. so you can't you can't exploit it by JavaScript, which is also a very ugly fix in a yeah. way. But, but, but this is actually. Much yeah, more so than just Melda and Spectre. This basically is generally just to be able to not do the whole cache uh, sniffing, right? Yeah. So any, any kind of cache sniffing vulnerability gets gets stopped by the, the timer resolution. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, the other thing that was interesting about this was the, I think there was a discussion on the Linux kernel mailing list where Linus throw a fit and. Uh, uh, somebody else tried to explain it to him a little, but I, I don't know. I haven't really followed that after the initial couple of mails I read. But it's, it's interesting. There was a very interesting article about the whole, like the way you're talking about it, more from the top. Like, what does Intel do to it? Not so much of like the micro architecture side of things. Uh, by Bunny Hong about uh, whether we should like whether we should take uh, Intel, like whether we should be angry against Intel or how should we approach this. Right? So he's basically saying that the problem is because uh, we don't we, we, are, we are not paying them enough money or, or like you know because they are, because of the way the whole economy works they are more and more uh, 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 like they, 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 Intel's like hiding more and more things in the way they, they implement the microarchitecture so mm -hmm. like we are going away and away from transparency of how stuff works internally and then this kind of stuff will pop up. Uh, because of the way uh, the whole stuff. The Is whole it just because it, it just gets more complicated, right? But it's not only that, right? It's also they don't open it up, right? If it was more, more, if it was explained better, we would be able to find this m way earlier and way, you know, not, not with like this stuff in, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. a million machines or whatever. I mean, part of it is probably also the fact that the ISA is so far removed from, from the real hardware. Exactly. Now. Yeah, that's that's the complexity. Yeah. X eighty six compatible. And a lot yeah. of these things are patches and patches and patches and patches. But I mean that that's not really a, a change in the approach of this, right? It, it's really just the complexity underneath that layer of abstraction that you need the documentation that you need to implement things. Yeah. Um, it, it just gets more complicated. It's not a not, not a political thing or something. Or like, how did he explain no, it's that? Not political. But, uh, yeah, maybe I, uh, maybe sh I will just post the the link to the article. Yeah. There. I think it's it's better. I think he explains it better than I do. But I think yeah. a lot of issues with a lot of stuff being hidden because if you know the thing is the second you have something like this, people's gonna call people are gonna call for RMAs and then mm -hmm. it tells to you know take on all the cost of dealing with all this stuff. So they try to hide more and more things because there's a lot of times, like you know, in the silicon process, you know, you have buggy IC. So they, you know, I think AMD was caught doing this where they had a four-core IC and then they just test the four cores and one of them was underperforming. They just That's cut out the the core and then sell it as a three-core IC. Three-core. Yeah, well, I thought it was also with with um, 
That's not really called. I thought there was yeah, standard yeah. practice also for Intel and also the the uh, the, the frequency. Yeah. The, I think the clock the, frequency. The, the, the frequency bin this thing. Right? It it but depends. Yeah, it depends on the quality the of the is, chip. If if I sold okay. you a four four core chip saying, well, this is a three core chip, but this you know yeah. whatever, I, I'll give you a twenty five percent discount. Mm. Many people will be like, no, I don't want this, right? But if I sell yeah. it as a three core it, chip, it's a three core chip. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of economics and, and how people think S about psychology. This. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll post the link to the, to the, the article, it's interesting. Yeah. But this was... Even on the other hand, Intel has made an absolute fuck up on, on handling the software side. Oh, yeah. They had like mm. six oh, yeah. month head start. And yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure they were running around like headless chickens for six months. Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, but, but then, yeah, no, but it would be like in... In December, where you started reading the news of, of uh, strange OS patches with very little comment, like it, in the Linux kernel as well, just yeah. um, and and then people started looking. I think at the updates for was it Windows or OS X? Were they also like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting. I, I and I wonder what the long-term damage for Intel is as well. Um, it was not only Intel. I mean. It's yeah. even ARM 64 was. It's, it's yeah. just this approach of doing out of order execution mm -hmm. uh, it needs to be much more thought through and much more, probably, you know, ex like much more formalized and somehow tacked to the, to the IC. It, now it's like in hindsight, it's like, of course, this is, this is a vulnerability. But, and I mean, you wonder why nobody thought about that when you say, at, like, wouldn't you think about the side effects of doing these things um, at first and, and, and think of like the people who built this should know. Okay. Yeah, it's, no, I think it died. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're done. No need to. And I think what's interesting also mm. is like, if this is, you know, it's just, if you think about it, it's like a super simple, you know, very easy, straightforward, just yeah. for all the things that haven't been changed, that yeah. should have, oh, haven't been cleaned up, that should have been cleaned up. Uh, Imagine all the other crazy things that it can have with all the different mm -hmm. modes of the CPU and the sleep modes and this and that and how that interacts with this. I'm yeah. sure you'll find a lot more of these kind of bugs going forward now that people are starting to look at this stuff. Okay, I'm calling it now the register allocator is going to be the next search. Okay. Think about it, right? It's like super complicated. This stuff is simple. I wonder. It's, it's kind of cool. Uh, I, I guess this is getting more attention now because yeah. uh, some a couple of young researchers, these guys, uh, PhD students and everything, sort of, they sort of became overnight stars of the security scene, more or less. And and Google kind of took second place. They're like, oh yeah, we also discovered this stuff. And they actually had a nice. I think the Google blog entry looks a bit easier to understand as well, right? There's a bit more um, uh, graphics and stuff in there, but um, I didn't. I didn't actually read that. I just looked at that. But Yeah, let's go for beers. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? No? I'll just close up with a couple of slides.